everyone, hey all, welcome back to the channel and today, today is, that's right, Countdown Day. And this one was inspired by the recent announcement of the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom part of the trilogy. And kind of a return to Beast Wars, which got me thinking about beasts, and animals, and bugs, and monsters. And I pose to the community, who are the top ten characters who have modes basically that aren't vehicle modes, who have alt modes that are based on, of course, animals, beasts, monsters, or bugs. And we're gonna count up all the votes, we're gonna put them together, we're gonna do the countdown 10 to 1 in the latest GotBot Counts Down. One hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light them up, baby, and hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, the Autobot Family, Transformers versus GI Joe versus DC Universe versus Marvel, and have a look for me everywhere across social media. And hey, if you want to join the team, if you want to be part of the channel, you of course can support us through Patreon, Teespring, or you can hit the join button simply on the channel and become a channel member. And this is the countdown of the top 10 characters as voted on by the community who have beast, animal, uh, bug, or monster modes. And I put them all together simply because it opened up the playing field a lot and it made the voting far more interesting. And this time around, the voting was super duper close. Very interesting the way it went, and a couple of real surprises on this, if I'm being honest. We had votes for everyone from Skybite to Stampy to uh, Double Cross and the other monster bots to Snarl and Swoop and everybody in between. We had uh, uh, guys like Gas Skunk get votes, Magnaboss, a whole bunch. But, as usual, we're going to start off with honorable mentions. There are eight of them, and we're going to do something uh, slightly different this time. When we get into the actual countdown, we actually have two alternates. And when we get to them, I'll explain why we have two alternates. But in terms of the honorable mentions first, there are normally five. But this time around, there's going to be more than five. Because all of these honorable mentions got the exact same number of votes. It wasn't quite enough to allow them onto the actual list, but they all got the exact same amount of votes, and they include Bombshell, Swoop, Beast Wars Inferno, who I really hoped was going to make the countdown. He would have made my personal countdown. Uh, Rhinox, um, Trypticon, who I think would have been high on my personal countdown. Bla um, no, Death Saurus, Black Arachnia, and Six Shot, who I thought was a really interesting one. Quick Switch also had a couple of votes, by the way. But, uh, uh, you know, some people voted for Six Shot because they said, well, he does have, uh, you know, among his many modes, he does have a beast mode. And you know what? They are right. And there was even a vote for the, uh, for Alpha Trion. And when I said, mm, does he really have a beast mode, though? They hearkened to the Titan's Return iteration where he was a lion. So, I did count that vote. Uh, anyway, none of them are on the main countdown. All of those had votes, but none of them had enough to make the main list. So you know where we're going to begin? We're going to begin at number 10 first. And with the announcement of Kingdom and the return of certain Beast Wars characters, it seems fitting to start this list off with a Beast Wars character who... This guy, Waspinator. Waspinator takes the number 10 slot. This, of course, is the Generations version. This is my second Generations version. Um, sad fact, I broke the arm off of my first one. Uh, uh, I think Waspinator got the votes he did because, A, everybody kind of knows Waspinator. Even if you're not a huge Beast Wars fan, everybody kind of knows Waspinator. He's kind of part of the general Transformers lexicon, if you will. Uh, I think that he's a, not only a memorable, memorable character, but he's somebody who... At least from my point of view, I always kind of pulled for, like, I kind of wanted good things for Waspinator. Even though he was trying his best to be bad, there was always something like likable, if not a little lovable, about this poor, dim-witted Wasp. 
And for that reason, he takes the number 10 slot. Number nine comes to us from G1, and I'm so surprised that this guy took number nine. Like, I'm really, really surprised that this guy took number nine. But a lot of people said they voted for him because he turns into a dot, dot, dot thing. Who am I talking about? None other than Blot. Not the uh, all the Terracons, though some people did try to vote for the entire group. Remember, these countdowns are based on specific characters. So I had to ask a lot of people to please specify the character. This isn't about the groups, it's about the character. And almost invariably, though there was a one vote for Sinner Twin, almost invariably, when I would say please specify, people would come back and say, okay then, block, because he turns into a dot 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 thing. And indeed he does turn into a thing. And I also love his color scheme. For that reason he takes the number nine slot. Now at number eight, we have a character that some people might have a problem with including on the list. It's none other than this guy, Laserbeak. Some people would have a problem because they'd say, wait, 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 his robot mode is the animal. His alt mode is a cassette. But people that voted for him argued that no, his normal mode, because he spends most of his time in Soundwave's chest, his normal mode is the cassette and his alt mode is the bird. And that's why they voted for him. I see the logic of that. However, for those, for the benefit of those that would really kind of have an axe to grind and say, no, this is his robot mode. This is one of the examples where we're going to include an alternate. Potentially in the number eight slot. If you have a problem with this guy, though, I count him and I think that he's fine at number eight. But if you have a problem and you want somebody else in the number eight slot, the next one that would have taken that slot would have been this guy over my shoulder, G1 Predaking, because, well... All of his parts turn into animals. I can see the argument for Laserbeak. I can see the argument for Predaking. Either one of them are a worthy stand-in for the number eight slot. And number seven once again takes us to Beast Wars with this guy, Tigatron. Now, some people might be surprised by this. and They might say, you know what, if you're going to have uh, a Beast Wars cat have a slot, maybe it should be Cheetor. But remember, this is about the best characters. And a lot of people found the character of Tigatron to be more engaging than Cheetor. Probably because he was a loner. Probably because he had such an interesting story arc with Air Razor. And probably because he had such a deep, thoughtful character nature to him. Maybe they just like the big white, you know, white tiger. I guess that's what he is. Is that what he is? A white tiger? Uh, because it's a little bit more of an exotic cat. Whatever the reason, this guy took the number seven slot and in the era of Kingdom. I'm not gonna lie, I'll totally be down for an update of this guy as much as I love this version of the mole. Now number six sticks with Beast Wars and this character is rough, tough, scarred, and heroic. Who am I talking about? None other than Depth Charge. He was absolutely scarred by the actions of Rampage, if you know the backstory of this character. He's definitely rough and tough and tumble. Definitely focused and definitely heroic because he knew what he was going to have to sacrifice in order to stop his mortal enemy. By the way, Rampage got a couple of votes as well, but nowhere close to what Depth Charge got. And probably because of all of those varieties of reasons, he takes the number six And it's that time again, you know where we are. We're at the halfway mark, and who takes the number five slot? None other than the boss monkey himself, Optimus Primal. I think it was kind of a foregone conclusion that somewhere on this list, we were gonna have Optimus Primal. I'm willing to guess that when Kingdom uh, you know, finally comes full swing, he is definitely going to be one of the ones to get an update. I'd be shocked if he didn't. That being said, there's a lot of people that might just opt to keep their optimal Optimus from Power of the Primes and call it good. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll see as time goes on. Nevertheless, the leader of the Maximals, one of the most recognizable of the Beast Wars characters, one of the most recognizable beasts, has to be... Optimus Primal, and for that reason, he takes the number five slot. Now, number four takes us again back to G1, and it's going to have the same problem that another character on this countdown had, number eight. Who am I talking about number four? Ravage. This, of course, is the classics version of Ravage that came with Hound. Still a fantastic Ravage, if you ask me. Um, and again, some people would say, no, his robot mode is the cat, is the panther. I guess that's what he is, a panther? 
Some people, again, use the same argument as with Laser Beak. said, no, his natural state is to be the cassette. His alt mode is the Panther. I can see the argument for it. So again, I included him. But if you're somebody who's not happy with Ravage at number four because you think we should have an alternate, the number four alternate, ironically, is this guy, the Transformers Prime Predaking. As where number eight's alternate was G1 Predaking, number four's alternate would be Transformers Prime Predaking. Again, I 100% see how this guy would have the votes that he has. Now you might say, whoa, 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 why aren't they just on the list anyway? Well, here's the thing. These two should have been, both G1 Predaking and this guy, should have been in the honorable mentions. Truth be known, if we took out Ravage and we took out Laserbeak, both Predakings would have taken the number 9 and 10 slots. It's tangly, so it's just easier to say that this guy would be a number four replacement. And that brings us to the top three. And at number three, perhaps we have the craziest of these monster beast type of transformers with uh, like an alt mode that's just bonkers. That being Sky Lynx. I mean, you have the bird, you have the Lynx, which are two different modes. You have the combined walking bird thing. Um, he, look, there's no doubt about it. There's so many modes to Skylinks besides the shuttle. The two separate, the two combined. Uh, they're definitely animalistic, and you know what? I totally get it. Yes, this is the Combiner Wars version. Yes, I plan to get the the Commander class version, but he has not, as of this recording, recording, recording. Uh, shown up in my neck of the woods. So for now, this is still the one that's in my collection, and I still like this lad. Um, I totally see why Skylinks would get the votes that he gets. I'm sure he'd be very proud to be this high in the countdown, though he would probably not be happy at not being number one because, after all, this is Skylinks' magnificence, if you will. Nevertheless, because of his wacky, crazy beast modes, he takes the number three slot, and that only leaves us with two. And number two is a character that's usually number four on these lists. You probably already know if you've been around the channel for any length of time. It's, of course, Grimlock. Much like with the Terracons, so many people just tried to vote for the entire Dinobot group. That's not how this works. It's a specific characters. You can't vote for groups. That's not the way voting works. You vote for one, not a whole bunch. Um, I don't even know why I need to explain that. Um, nevertheless, I done the same thing, just like when I went back and said, no, guys, it can't be the Terracons, it has to be one, and, and almost everybody voted for Blot, except for the, the person who voted for Sinner Twin. Again, I would go back here and say, guys, it has to be a specific Dinobot. A couple of people voted for Dinobot, who I really thought was going to make it on this countdown. Uh, one person voted for Snarl, I think, a couple for Swoop, but far and away, people would come back and say, Grimlock. And... Uh, you know what? I can't argue with him. The guy turns into a dinosaur. Now, two people specifically said, not just Grimlock, but the fall of Cybertron Grimlock. I don't know why they specified, but I'm going to specify for you. I lumped them all together, and whatever Grimlock you want to reference, he takes the number two slot. And that brings us to number one, and I can guarantee you that number one would absolutely look at you and say, yeah, I deserve to be number one. I should be number one because I am the greatest beast former that there ever was. Who am I talking about? None other than the leader of the Beast Wars Predacons himself, Megatron. And this guy far and away took the number one slot. Now, the voting was such that this guy was a shoe in really, for number one. Fairly, I'm not going to say fairly early on, but... Early enough on that I was like, yeah, it would be something for even Grimlock to catch up to him. Um, I did end up lumping in two votes that came in for the Transmetal version of this guy, and a bunch of votes that came in for the um, Transmetal 2, the Dragon version of this guy. Honestly, I, I thought about counting all of them separately, but had I done that, this guy, this version, just the original dinosaur version of Megatron would have still far and away been number one and the other two versions the other two bodies for this guy probably would have come in as honorable mention so I said you know what nuts to that I'm just gonna put all three body types in one and talk about them all in the number one slot this mode 
far and away was the one that kind of took the top slot, but I, I totally see the Transmetal one, and I see why some people would say that's the most iconic iteration of Megatron for them. As a matter of fact, I think it might be the most iconic iteration of Megatron for me. Uh, and undoubtedly, that Dragon Megatron, I would love to have a proper update of him. We did get one a few years ago using the uh, R.I.D. Megatron mold, and that was super well done, but like a proper update, and with Kingdom Around the Corner, maybe this guy will get the update that's long overdue and that he so much deserves. And there you have it, babies! One more time, we went from 10 to 1, and it was uh, voted on by all of you all across social media. This was a definitely an interesting one. While number one was far and away a clear winner, Everybody else was close, like, and I, I mean super close. We had so many that were tie numbers. We had so many that were just separated by one. In the honorable mentions, all of them, there were eight honorable mentions this time. All of them had the exact same number of votes. It was very close races, right up as high as number two. Now, Grimlock did kind of get a good last push. Nobody was going to catch up to Beast Wars Megatron. He was definitely the go-to answer for the majority. And that's it. We've done it again. I appreciate you coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, don't forget you can become a channel member. You can check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Also, most especially, don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, baby, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time, man, that you and I get together to have another visit either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the Stop Motion Premieres or the old-fashioned way right here inside the videos.